so your cost of ownership is really low when you get yourself into a 5.7, which opens up the door for you to either enjoy other aspects of your life, uh, keep the money in your bank account, or mod okay and that is why i have a channel is because i purchased a vehicle uh that allowed me to save and through the saving process i would try you know uh different mods you know a t2 pedal commander shorty headers intakes exhausts all that kind of good stuff <laughs> Alright guys, so we are going to answer a question today and that is, is getting the 5.7 in the Charger or the Challenger worth it? Um, I get asked a lot of questions and you know, a lot of people are looking into cars and you know, really to answer this question, you have to understand what your budget is and what it is that you expect out of your car, okay? Um, I personally love the 5.7 in the Chargers and the Challengers. Uh, because of the cost of ownership and what it is that I do with my car, okay? Um, so I'm going to explain to you, and, and I hope that anybody that stumbles upon this, that, that is looking into, you know, Chargers, Challengers with a 5.7 in it, uh, finds this helpful. Uh, now, before I jump too far into it, uh, make sure you like and subscribe the video. I do appreciate it. Hope this information is helpful. Um, so I have now had a Charger... RT with a 5.7 for a little over two years. And, you know, without the, let's not talk about the engine just yet. I have to say that the charger itself has been a dream. Okay. It has been unbelievable. I love the Uconnect software. I love just all the, the EVIC, you know, screens and, and the, you know, just how everything is laid out. I think the charger and the challenger are very spacious. I think the, just the, how Dodge laid everything out, it makes for a very comfortable ride. Uh, and if you were to look into chargers and challengers and ask online, you would think that these things are, are, you know, falling apart and they're a pile of crap, this, that, and the other thing. I was nervous getting a charger because I, uh, was a Chevy person and really all you have to go on is what, you know, people say about chargers and challengers. I have had an unbelievable experience. Now, going into now the engine size, this is all on what it is that you plan on doing with your car, okay? And your budget. If you do not have that good of a budget, don't overextend yourself and get a trim level that you're not supposed to have. <clears throat> it will result in a very stressful life. I've seen people have to give up their car because uh, they should not have been able to afford uh, a certain trim level. And, you know, several months into their payments, they had to give it up. So make sure your your budget and your, your engine size and, and everything matches what it is that you're able to live with. Okay. Um, so if you find yourself in the Northeast and constantly in bad weather, uh, like Maine and Canada, you know, a V6 with all wheel drive is, should be right up your alley. For me, the happy medium was the 5.7. Uh, no regrets whatsoever getting the 5.7. It has, um, for the first year and a half, it was my daily driver. Every single day, uh, the combination of, you know, bumper to bumper traffic, a little bit of free, you know, free highway driving, and kind of stop and go, stop and go, resulted in about 18 to 20 miles per gallon on road trips when I would find a nice stretch of road where, uh, on the highway where no one was bothering me, I could get upwards of 30 miles per gallon. So with the 5.7, uh, fuel economy was not that bad, actually. And it took, a, uh, what is it, regular gas. Uh, now this is this thing is tuned for 93, but when you first get your 5.7, you could put regular octane 80, uh, 89 in there. 
and that'll save you a couple bucks on that. Um, another thing that I saved tremendously on was insurance. I pay, uh, you know, really cheap for this thing. I think it's like uh, 80 bucks a month or something like that. So, uh, again, another reason why I love the 5.7 is they don't really label this as a sports car or uh, like a super performance vehicle. Um, so your cost of ownership is really low when you get yourself into a 5.7, which opens up the door for you to either enjoy other aspects of your life uh, keep the money in your bank account or mod. Okay. And that is why I have a channel is because I purchased a vehicle, uh, that allowed me to save. And through the saving process, I would try, you know, uh, different mods, you know, a T2 pedal commander, shorty headers, intakes, exhausts, all that kind of good stuff. Um, you know, I just do this stuff for fun and, you know, I save a couple bucks and then I, I, I just mod the car, see how it goes and document it and this, that, and the other thing. So if you're a person that really enjoys tinkering around and, and modding and changing things up, the 5.7 Hemi will o allow you to, you know, keep some of that money in your bank account and open up the door for you to modify your car. Um, if you were to ask me money is no object, then of course I would have chosen the uh, the larger Hemi, which is the 392, the more performance-minded uh, Hemi. And you know, Dodge did an amazing job with the 392. Uh, you could certainly feel that performance when you're gunning it. This video is brought to you by Knives Deal. You're probably wondering, what do you have a bullet for? Well, this is not a bullet. It's something to help you with your next mod. Yep. And after you're done unboxing, if you find yourself in races, if you're going to the drag strip, if you're racing your buddies, if you're doing any kind of like sh extreme performance stuff, you're gonna wanna get yourself into a 392 or a Hellcat. Both of those two are really the high performance Hemis. Uh, the 5.7 is kind of like, it, it's a it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful in-betweener, okay? Uh, you get that beautiful V8 sound. You have plenty of performance for everyday driving. And you know, if you wanna have a little bit of fun, there's not a second that like, if I'm at a dead stop and I and I step on my, my gas pedal, I can roast my tires, no problem. The amount of torque that's in the 5.7 is plenty to have fun with. If you never plan on racing, if you never plan on going to the drag strip, the, there's no reason to even bother with anything other than that. Um, so, but if money is not an object and you're constantly finding yourself in pos a position where you're gonna be, you know, lining up against other people, the 392 and the Hellcat are, are the option that you're gonna wanna go to. Um, the 57 yes it's it's fun to mod and and everything like that uh but right out of the gate starting off with a a car like the 392 or Hellcat is going to give you a big big advantage um I have a modded 57 and you know it it's great I love it but at the end of the day I still cannot beat a um a, uh, a 392 in the quarter mile and I am not even touching a Hellcat okay so you know I mod because I enjoy it because I'm having fun with it. I'm developing a YouTube channel. And if you find yourself that you're just you're just modding to mix things up and just enjoy the car, you know, owning a car, then the 57 is definitely right up your alley. Um so that is really what I have to say about the engine sizes, the interior. I love it. Uh I have the RT package so everything is like leather and uh, has the custom stitching and everything like that. The exterior design, I mean, me personally, I don't think you can beat the design of the Chargers and the Challengers. You want that retro, that real retro car looking, the Challenger hits it out of the park, okay? Uh, better than any other car on the road today. If you want like that that man sedan, you know, that, that vicious, it's basically a muscle car with four doors, you know, and that is the Charger. And really the Charger doesn't have any competitors anymore. Um, and the reason why is because this thing knocked them all out. There's a reason why so many people are driving this car. It is gorgeous, it's comfortable, it fits a lot of people, and it's smooth, it drives smooth. Whether you get it in the Hellcat all the way to the V6, it's gonna have 
plenty of performance for those acceleration ramps and and it's going to drive smooth when you have family and friends in the car but when you're alone and you want to do some testing no matter which one you choose you're going to have fun